So this is Opus Spam with root beer teriyaki. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna keep our eyes peeled for little bits of blood. We take it out because it adds a little bit of bitterness to the Spam. So basically, if we're getting people to eat something crazy like Opa Spam, then we owe it to them to make it taste as good as possible. We owe it to the Spam to make it taste as good as possible. So we got our, our cheeks. And just like meat, Opa is a great fish to make meat substitutes with because it's actually warm blooded. Different cuts of it have the right amount of fat. So the things that make a good spam is fat, salt, flavor, the right amount of smoke on the ham side of things. The other thing with a good spam is you gotta remember it's spam. As chefs, we always kinda wanna make things as classy as possible. And if we make this too classy, then it's not gonna be spam anymore. It's just gonna be a terrine. That's part of the reason that we're using dried spices. At the restaurant, we have different uses for Opa ham and Opa spam. The beautiful thing about the spam is that it's a way to make the less than perfect pieces good. So in our ham making process, any scraps that we have just go into the spam and become beautiful again. So what we have here, we have the fat cap left on. So this right here is a super important part of the process because you know when we when we eat spam we have that kind of potato starchy taste but really you got the fat and you got the salt and that makes good spam. So this is our our chance to introduce fat into this mix because as good as uh, opa is it, it it can't compete with a pig when it comes to fattiness but this this here can just a beautiful fatty fishy smoky goodness right now. We're just gonna pull into meat grinder sized chunks. This is still a little warm coming right off the smoker. As it cools down, it kind of sets up and really holds its form a lot nicer than this. You wanna see fat? Little splash guard. You never have too much fat, but you don't want the fat in the wrong place. So this right here is for the half of the internet that likes it when I wear gloves. In a little bit, I'll take them off for the other half of the internet that hates it when I wear gloves. Do one but hand, no gloves, one hand, gloves. Yeah. That, would, that would be the Michael Jackson tribute. So what we're gonna do here now is season and bind it. White pepper. And remember, this is kind of a formula that you can play with. This is onion powder, but you know, keeping it true to uh, what Spam is supposed to be, you can't get too high class with it because it's Spam. Garlic powder, granulated garlic actually. So we put a little touch of brown sugar, just helps it caramelize like the pork caramelizes. We don't want to put too much because you don't want it to caramelize too fast either. You really don't want to think about the amount of sodium that's in Spam. But this is gonna be a simple way to do Spam without all the other nasty stuff that goes in there. If you really want, you can put a little MSG in it, depending on what your beliefs are. Potato starch, though, is super important. So potato starch is gonna help soak up a lot of that fat, and it's gonna bind it. It'll also kind of give it that, um, that nice potato chip flavor, French fry flavor that is definitely, you can taste it in the Spam. It's definitely not at the front. You kind of can't put your finger on it. So all of that fat needs to be evenly dispersed. When we cook it, that fat's gonna kind of render out, and that'll be the base of the flavor. Now, some people like to use spoons and spatulas, but like with this, I want it so perfectly mixed. There's just some things that you can feel with your fingers. You can't feel through the end of a spatula. But now you can kind of see that all that stuff's evenly dispersed. You can kind of see the red, which is the raw opa. You can see the more spam colored chunks, which is the opa ham. Already looking pretty close to what spam is supposed to look like. All this stuff is super flexible. Kind of planting, the, hopefully planting a seed or giving you an idea. Definitely run with it. It's spam. It's pretty resilient. It can take a lot and still come out tasting good. We got all that salt, we got all that smoke, and we got all that sweetness. So don't trip. We're gonna put it in a sous vide bag and hit it at 180 degrees for about 20 minutes. And the sous vide bag also helps us kind of get it into 
a semi-spam shaped form. Anybody at home, if you're not a professional cook, whenever you're doing this with food savers, I always flip the edge because then we're not greasing up the bag where it's gonna be sealing. And portioning doesn't really matter as much. I'll kind of have it pressed and formed into a similar thickness so that the cook time is uniform. But as long as you get it close, you'll be fine. And then this is also gonna be cut and cooked one last time too. Only thing with this spam is it's not gonna last anywhere near as long as typical spam because it doesn't have all the preservatives in it. So you definitely wanna eat it relatively quickly. But here we're just really just squeezing the air out and in squeezing the air out, we're forming a spam shape. For the sushi bar, we typically take this, cut it in two, and these are perfect little bam masubi. One bite, about half the size of what you get at the ABC store in Hawaii. But it's just a, an easier, more delicate bite for like the restaurant setting. So the other reason we like these bags is that it holds it together while you're cooking it. We're eventually gonna do away with this just because of the excess waste. Into the jacuzzi making sure it's fully submerged. 20 minutes in the jacuzzi and we'll have some spam. After jacuzzi time, we ice down our bags. We cut open and use whenever. So now we're gonna break it down to spam sized pieces. So from here on out, we're gonna just cook this like you would normal spam. Keep in mind we put that little bit of sugar in there so it is gonna caramelize. Little seaweed seat bolts here. That's root beer teriyaki sauce. This is a fun way of using up pieces of fish that definitely aren't appreciated as much as they should be. 